Hello mga ka-Alien, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Sir DL and welcome to the Aliens Vlog and Match Tutorials. For today, we're going to have another Match Tutorials and it's all about Pythagorean Theorem. What is Pythagorean Theorem? Before we start our main discussion, what are the objectives of this lesson? Number one, discuss Pythagorean Theorem. Number two, identify the rules in Pythagorean Theorem. And number three, solve the examples of Pythagorean Theorem. Always remember, do not stop when you are tired, you stop when you finished. Again, do not stop when you are tired, you stop when you finished. Let's start with what is Pythagorean Theorem. Pythagorean Theorem states that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the two sides. Again, Pythagorean Theorem states that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the two sides. So, the longest side of a triangle is what we call hypotenuse. This, side, this might be side A or side B. Side A or side B, it depends upon the given. It states that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the square of the sum of the two sides. In finding the hypotenuse, the formula will be C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. In finding side A, A squared is equal to C squared minus B squared. In finding the side B, B squared is equal to C squared minus A squared. Let's try to have an example. Given A is equal to 6, B is equal to 8, what is the hypotenuse? So, given the formula, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. What are the steps to follow? Number one, substitute the values on the given formula. So the value for A is 6 and the value for B is 8. The value for A is 6, the value for B is 8. Number two, simplify the term with exponent. So we will be simplifying 6 raised to 2, then 8 raised to 2. So what is 6 times 6? That is 36. What is 8 times 8? That is 64. Next, we add 36 plus 64, that is 100. 36 plus 64, that is 100. Next step, square root both sides. So we will be doing square root on both sides. Square root of C squared, then square root of 100. The answer, 10. So, the hypotenuse is 10. Another example. A is equal to 1. B is equal to 3. What is the hypotenuse? Or what is the length of the hypotenuse? C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Steps to follow. Substitute the values on the given formula where A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 3. A is equal to 1, B is equal to 3. Simplify the term with exponent. So, 1 raised to 2 plus 3 raised to 2. 1 times 1, that is 1. 3 multiplied by 3, that is 9. Next process, we add. After we add, 1 plus 9, that is 10. Then square root both sides. So, we will be... Squaring both sides, square root of both sides, C squared is equal to the square root of 10. So the final answer is C is equal to the square root of 10. That is the final answer. Let's try to have another example. We are going to find for side A, B is 7, C is 10. What is the length of side A? So the formula to be used, A squared is equal to C squared minus B squared. Steps to follow, number 1. Substitute the values on the given formula. The value for C is 10. The value for side B is 7. So the value for C is 10. The value of B is 7. Simplify the term with exponent. So what is 10 squared and what is 7 squared? 10 times 10, then 7 times 7. That is 10 times 10, 100. 7 times 7, 49. Next process, subtract. 100 minus 49, that is 51. 100 minus 49, that is 51. Square root both sides. So the square root of A squared is equal to the square root of 51. So the answer is A is equal to the square root of 51. 
because 51 has no factors which is well, has no factors with perfect square and and the square root of 51 is not a perfect square that's why the final answer is square root of 51 another example missing again side a b is 8 c is 12 what is side a what is the length of side a steps to follow substitute the values on the given formula so c is 12 b is 8 simplify the term with exponent 12 times 12 8 times 8 that is 144 then 64 subtract number three step so 144 minus 64 that is 80 next one square root both sides so the square root of the factor of 80 is 16 and 5 80 is not a perfect square that's why we look for two factors and one of the factor must be a perfect square and that is 16 16 times 5 that is 80 what is the square root of 16 the square root of a squared is a the square root of 16 is 4 then square root of 5 so the final answer is side a is 4 square root of 5 another one side a is c 6 b is missing c is 11 so we will be using the formula b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared steps to follow in solving Substitute the values on the given formula where a is 6, then c is 11. So c is 11, a is 6. Simplify the term with exponent 11 times 11, then 6 times 6, that is 11 times 11 is 121. 6 times 6, that is 36. Then we subtract 121 minus 36, that is 85 square root both sides so the square root of b squared and the square root of 85 so the final answer is the square root of 85 because 85 is not a perfect square and it has no factor which is also a perfect square that's why the final answer is the square root of 85 next example a is equal to 3 B is missing again, C is 9. So we will be using the same formula, B squared is equal to C squared minus A squared. Steps to follow. Again, number 1, substitute the values on the given formula. B squared is equal to C is, C is 9, A is 3. Simplify the term with exponent. So 9 squared, then 3 squared. 9 times 9, then 3 times 3. 9 times 9, that is 81. 3 times 3, that is 9. Then subtract. So 81 minus 9, that is 72. Square root both sides. So we will be squaring both square root both sides. As you can see, I factored out 72, wherein one of the factors must be a perfect square. Because 72 is not a perfect square, so we will be looking for a factor or factors and one must have a perfect square and that is 36 because 36 multiplied by 2 that is 72 and the square root of 36 is 6 so the final answer will be side b is equal to 6 the square root of 2 that is our final answer that is very simple to follow in finding the value for c squared we just follow the formula c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared then for side a that is a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared for b b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared we're finished with our discussion always remember to be excellent of what is good and be innocent of evil this is sir dl thank you for watching and god bless you please keep on subscribing on my youtube channel have a nice day god bless you